Hello, I'm Show Studios editor Hetty Malik, and we're going to be running up the final day of Milan Fashion Week. And um, this was all about kind of bringing together beauty, creativity, but really with practicality um, and craft, pragmatic clothing that at its core is really incredibly crafted and made and that is essential um, in terms of essential in terms of its wearability but very unique in terms of the beauty of how it's crafting and its proposition and um, so we're going to talk about Bottega Veneta by Matthew Blasey, Bali which was the first collection under its new creative director Simone Bellotti and then Maximilian Davis who is designing over at Ferragamo. Um, all of these designers are dealing with legacy, legacy in terms of heritage brands um, legacy in terms of what has come before them and what they want to kind of propose um, for their consumer today. Um, so pragmatic luxury, I think, really key idea. Let's kick off with um, Bottega Veneta, um, the kind of final big show on the schedule on Saturday evening. Um, Bottega is always kind of a look twice show. Um, you know, this season again, we had the plaid shirts, which are actually made out of leather, the denim jeans, which are actually made out of leather. Um, but it goes further than kind of trompe l'oeil. It's, it's really a house that's about craft. It's about the work that they do. You know, all of all of the work is done in house. They work so closely with, with their artisans, with their maison kind of makers, with kind of Italian factories. It's really Italian craft and manufacturing kept at home. Um, and even though that's all also very much kept at home, it's in house, you know, you've got to really go and look up close at these pieces. I went to a Risi this morning, which is where kind of press and clients are invited to come and look at the clothes after the collection is shown. And I always love going to these because, but the Bottega one in particular, because it is about what's up close, you know, you might have a big knitted jumper, which is amazing, but actually up close, it's more like an embroidery, um, a kind of fringe tassel leather card coat, but the inside has the classic Bottega weave. In Giacchiato, um is the classic kind of Bottega weave, which you'll see on some of their key, key handbags, like the Jody. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, you know, Bottega is at heart about home, it's about Italy, but then it's also about kind of, the global idea. So this season, Matcha was thinking about travel as a concept, but really about kind of this childlike um, idea of travel. So looking on the back of cereal boxes when you're a kid and you're sitting there eating your cereal and it has kind of, you know, games of kind of a world map and you're kind of sitting there as a child, but your mind takes you to other places. So this was very much about where the mind can help us wander to. So, you know, there were key things in this collection continuation of the sardine bag with the sardine on the handle. Um, what else was there? There was a beautiful dress, which I really loved, which reminded me of the idea of the sea. Um, so kind of, you know, when you get kind of, um, when seaweed and kind of sea foam washes up on the beach and it kind of clunks together, maybe not the most beautiful image, but this dress made something beautiful out of that in my kind of creative, create, when our, my mind was kind of creating stories using using these clothes, looking at them, this kind of interwoven um, effect of kind of white leather with pinks and elements of brown and maybe even kind of speckles of green in there as well. Weaving is so key, as I've mentioned, to the House of Bottega. So we've got that kind of beautiful seaweed almost dresses, um, the essential luxury of the plaid shirt and the denim jeans made in leather. Um, but, you know, this this collection really was about pushing pushing that craft and the people behind it. And um, another highlight in this collection was the raffia um, effect, the raffia used on dresses and skirts. So the kind of hems fringe outwards and have all these different strips of raffia in them. Um, the closing kind of dresses as well had these kind of pom-pom effects, which, you know, again, these clothes need to be seen in movement to see all this craft kind of in action, if you will. Um, the big borsa bag, kind of huge, kind of great kind of, you know, imagine if that was your laptop bag, I kept saying when we were going around, great big shoulder bag, you know, you've got the contrast of these, but then the kind of smaller Donna Borsa bags with the sardine, you know, there's such a great offering of accessories, but if you're kind of, you know, this these clothes work editorially and they also work for a very niche, but devoted clientele who want these 
kind of incredibly crafted pieces that sometimes are even one of one because it's so difficult to make them um such as a blue there's a blue dress with feathers on it and i it is incredible um we'll put some footage in here of, of these details but the feathers are individually dipped in blue and and it's amazing and they were saying you know they don't know if they're going to reproduce that or not they think it would probably just be a one of one because of the incredible handcraft that goes into this um you know talking about that blue this paddling pool blue um which i'm calling it was definitely the color of the season this season that was on that dress we had it in a kind of intricate weave um kind of mule sandals as well those kind of classic Bottega sandals high heeled sandals um and then some other elements as well but you know i want to use that color to take us into the next collection that i want to talk about which is fairy grammar by maximilian davis um maximilian also used this paddling pool blue especially in kind of big again big bags that are kind of um similar to that Bottega one are for living in there for going around the city it's for this kind of pragmatic wearer who pragmatic luxury wearer that wants things that are useful and that she she or he or they can live their life in you know bags comfortable shoes you know jumping back quickly to Bottega those high-heeled um mules they have a great grip on the forefront of the foot and um, you know it's it's all for living in it's really for going it's for living um while kind of you know still having this twist of creativity um so maximilian had these paddling pool blue bags as well um and that's kind of key it's a key thing to pick up on that maximilian was was using this color because in previous seasons he's about kind of four seasons in now i think um, it was kind of leaning into the bright Ferragamo red, you know, the rebrand of Ferragamo was done with its kind of archival, clean, kind of pure primary red with the black logo on top. Um, and, you know, previous collections have really been about that primary red. They've been about kind of beiges, sand colours, blacks, whites, but kind of sticking within that colour range where the only real kind of colour other than black and white is really a strong red, or at least that's kind of how I, when I think back to what Maximilian has done so far, that's really what sticks out. Maybe some kind of greys in there as well. Um, but this season he was, Maximilian really moved away from that red. There was no ferragamo red in this collection. There was paddling pool blue. There was kind of olive, deep olive green in this collection. Um, there was terracotta. There was your whites, your blacks, those kind of base, base level colours as well. But you know, I think it's it's interesting to pick up on because Maximilian isn't getting stuck. He's continuing to push and move forward as he builds up a new design language um, for this Italian heritage brand. Um, things that Maximilian has kind of, you can feel he's kind of always looked at, oh, kind of Italian, Italy's kind of rich history. You know, being in Italy, it's such a country that's rich, full of kind of art history it's been so vital to that um you know you think of the most recent Ferragamo campaign which I think is absolute genius and my favorite campaign in years um which was kind of looking at this idea of Ferragamo's new renaissance within the context of the Italian renaissance so models who were also in this show that we saw for spring summer 24 were photographed against um paintings from the Uffizi gallery to kind of juxtapose this idea of the new Italian kind of the Italian Renaissance of Ferragamo now, and then the origins of the Renaissance, the art movement in Italy. Um, those models I mentioned are people like Anok Yai and Vittoria Soretti, um, both kind of wearing looks which were key to also inspirations for this collection. Again, looking at ideas of Italy. Um, Anok was wearing this amazing kind of slouched, um, kind of in between kind of a belt, body jewelry, almost it was in no way utilitarian but if you think of how a utility belt kind of with someone's tools sits on their waist and their hip that was kind of the some sort of, kind of vibe in this but basically it was this kind of beautiful beaded thick belt which mirrored the idea of mosaics and um, that was something that maximilian referenced he was thinking about this season while his vittoria's look referenced renaissance armor she was wearing these almost body molding kind of this black molding, which was in this kind of lacquered effect, um, kind of embedded into the dress. So you've got these different ideas of kind of 
history and the romance of kind of, you know, you think of mosaics, you think of holiday, but then you think of the Renaissance, you think of armour, you think of kind of this more kind of heavy kind of history um, as well. Um, Maximilian was also looking um, at the paintings by Agostino Brunius, who was working in the 18th century, um, thinking about Italian marble, thinking, you know, he referenced all these different kind of pinpoints and you can feel that he is, he's really as someone who was previously based in London and is now in Milan, you can feel that he's really immersed in the city and its history and he really has taken is is doing such a great job at Ferragamo I mean he's in his kind of early not early 20s but he's, he's pretty young um and he's done a phenomenal job really um you know not afraid of exploring different colors each season hasn't got stuck this collection you know had had amazing tailoring in it, which was something, you know, Maximilian as a designer with his own brand previously was really known for his kind of incredible innovative tailoring and really, really sharp eye. And that's something that kind of really was the basis of his debut collection. But actually for Spring Summer 24, we had some opening looks of kind of tailored jackets, but then they were more kind of, um, the sleeves just hung over the shoulders and had slits. So it was almost like a kind of cape, became kind of a cape. So we did have those opening tailored looks, but then it was, he was really exploring different silhouettes, whether that be kind of wrap dresses, which almost had prints, which made me think of kind of the prints and drawings that you'd have on mosaics, kind of sweeping kind of draped fabrics. Paloma Alcesa was wearing a kind of halter neck draping mint green dress. I would say I do find it very irritating when the slightly bigger models always get put in these draped looks that's just swamp their whole body shape. So I don't know if maybe it would have been more effective to see her styled in a different outfit. Um, the green in this collection was used for a, quite a big chunk of this. Um, so there were kind of, and also in leather. Um, so leather coats, skirts, dresses. Um, that was kind of, this. It, you could feel that this section was kind of, had a very strong identity to it. Um, you know, moving through the collection more of, you know, I mentioned Paloma's look, this kind of draped halter neck look, that was kind of a silhouette, an idea that ran throughout this collection, whether that be kind of longer form tops over trousers, which kind of, it was either big, big wide trousers or it was a skirt, I couldn't quite tell, but I quite like that in a look where it fits the body, but as it moves, you're not really sure whether it's a skirt or a trouser and it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, I'm just looking through this through this again now, more of that paddling pool blue, whether that in kind of bags under the arm or splatters on top of these kind of um, almost caftan-like forms, um, kind of slicings of charcoal grey through this to break it up and beiges. Lots of lots of kind of amazing dresses in this, but also separate. It's really key for kind of building this this new Ferragamo wardrobe out for the wearer, really, and for this consumer that they're kind of courting. Um, while also, you know, having this just to me looking at this collection in the same way as kind of Bottega did in its own way, and the same way as Bali did, which I'm going to talk about in a second. This is. It feels true to Ferragamo, it feels like a wardrobe, it feels pragmatic, but it also feels incredibly luxury. Um, so, you know, I've mentioned Bali there, let's talk about that. Um, so this is the first season after Ruigi um, left after having just done one season. Um, I think one season, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, Ruigi did one season and then Simone is kind of in now and he did a really brilliant job at a debut. You know, it was interesting having had Bali go through this brief period where it was kind of injected with this idea of kind of America, LA, Hollywood, glamour. And this season was really much about pulling it back. Um, Bali's actually a Swiss label, um, but the show was held in these kind of Italian, almost um, kind of colonnade cloister, kind of indoor outdoor setting. So instantly when you're sat down, you're surrounded by Italian architecture. It's very much kind of, this is going back to more something else this is we're changing changing tempo here we're pulling back this collection was very much about something pragmatic as i keep saying pragmatic luxury this was about pulling back fine tuning um and re-establishing and actually it felt like this you know i don't think every brand every brand can't 
can't go under a big rebrand and it shouldn't do. I think fashion is so fatigued at kind of reinvention and creative directors and designers going in and out of different houses and reinventing the whole wheel. And it's also tiring and, and, and confusing for the consumer. And actually what was clever this season is Bally was about going back to the, back to its core really, not injecting something new and redoing it. This is about going back to its core. Um, whether that was kind of, you know, the opening looks, which were very kind of guts, polo tops, lots and lots of outerwear in this collection. So little kind of five button down blazers, um, a lot of these in leather. So again, that idea of kind of luxury, but, you know, taking this back to the beginning of kind of what Mathieu was doing at Bottega, where he was thinking about pragmatic luxury, but with the idea of creativity and imagination and where your mind can take you to travel. Um, you know, and really Maximilian was doing that as well by thinking about the kind of magic of the past and history and how he can make that modern and use that as kind of a narrative to drive his design forward. That was some, what Simone was kind of doing at Bali as well, um, because he was thinking about Switzerland. He was thinking about a particular um, group of kind of intellectuals and artists and um, the Monte Verita community in the 20th century. Um, you know, you think about Switzerland, you think about the Dardarists were there for a period. You know, early 20th, early 20th century artists and intellect, it was somewhere where they kind of gathered and thought and created. Um, and I think that dichotomy of creation and intellect is really what summarises these shows. Um, and definitely that contrast and balance is something that was definitely captured in this ballet collection. You know, as I've said, boiling down to those wardrobe essentials, all of those key things, but then also looking at elements in the archive. Um, the footwear in this collection was great, especially um, a reiteration of the Bally Oxford men's loafer. Um, and then, you know, there were just little touches like cowbells on bags, little kind of florets of flowers worn on kind of little chest belts. Um, yeah, I just thought this, it felt like Bally, you could feel it in the room. It's you know, it's not trying to rebrand the whole image. It feels right for Bali. You know, they tried to rebrand, it didn't work. And actually, I think it's about refocusing and thinking, what did Bali represent at the beginning? What does it represent now? It's a really wearable, essential wardrobe with these little, you know, it's fun for a designer to add these little tweaks, you know, there was kind of a floral design in this, which I believe was probably from the archive because I could sense that they were looking at archive things in this collection, but it also may not be, it may be a custom thing. Let me know if you know, because I cannot find out. <laughs> I haven't been able to find out in the press release and um, I'm trying to get this get this filmed for you guys. And um, so I haven't had a chance to talk to the PR properly. But um, yeah, that was done in like little swimsuits and on bags. So you have these kind of elements of print and interest, but then really that's woven into an absolute essential wardrobe. Um, so yeah, pragmatic luxury with still interest, flair, childhood kind of just fun. And these are all just desirable clothes, which you can look at online. You could look at in the shop, you know, whether you're doing either of those, it's like, these are clothes that even if you can't wear them, you want to wear them and you want to look at them and you want to consume them and they are beautiful essential clothes um and that's really what a fashion show should do and this was absolute highlight of the week so thank you for watching and stay tuned because we will be back with paris reviews very very soon thank you for watching and let us know what you thought about the shows in the comments below bye